be better than your sonnies, John. Yeah, they work. Yeah, can you see Australia from here, and them? <laughs> I can barely see here, mate. Yeah. Cool. Happy days. Okay, guys. Uh, on the pasture today. Uh, with my racer too, it's just popped a big target at about three inches down, and here she is. Look, looks furniture fitting to me. In my wildest dreams, I'd like to think Shield Boss. It's not an absolute impossibility, I guess, but it's what age people attribute to it. For furniture, I'm not sure what purpose it could serve, but I like it. It's like a mini UFO of, of history. Do -do 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 -do. Take me to your leader. Take me to your leader. Because I'm something cool. Got Skippy up here this morning on the pasture. This is the bullock field, this, for being brave. If those bullocks come over, they're a right pain. They don't half crowd you. But we shall see. We shall see. In all seriousness, sir, uh, would you get subscribed to Anglo Celtic? Look, I'm bloody surrounded now. All I've got between me and these hooves is a little tree stump. Come on, look. Motorhead or ACDC? I don't know, you stop it too, don't be tasting me. I don't taste good, taste like an Englishman. Englishman, yeah. The Aussie's over there, go and get the Aussie, he's a puff. Leave me alone now. It's not even funny no more. Just answer me one question. If I let you wear the yellow specs, would you get subscribed to Anglo Celtic? Yellow Kex, yellow Kex, yellow specs. Yeah, put them on, put them on, come on, you want to taste everything, don't you? Yellow specks, cake, madness, as much madness as you can poke a stick at, kids. Yeah, that type of stick. That's what you get if you subscribe to me. Now leave me alone, leave me alone. There's an Aussie over there behind all them trees, he's, he's not soft. He's got four trees between you lot and me. You won't let me alone, kids. You've absolutely surrounded and dumbfounded me, look. Yeah, and you. Don't you say it's not you, it's all of you. All of you guys. I want you subscribed to Anglo-Celtic. Yes, and you, Mrs. Black and White, can't decide. Not the man in the hat. Anglo-Celtic. Away! Not song, them kids. Arr, the old dirt pirate detecting. A shot across the bowels, kids. A shot across the bowels. Look at this. Look at that for a bullet. It's proper slap something there, isn't it? Now, if I took that to the head, I'd feel it. It'd make me very angry, but I'd feel it. And I'd have something to say to the geezer who fired it. Because that, slapping the side of my head at 500 mile an hour, would sting a bit. Well, I just got a big banging signal on my racer two. Shouting at me really loud at number 82. And it's not some trash it's a really cool badge of sorts maybe it's been on some machinery it's fairly local as well pretty local that and i haven't had any cool local stuff off these farms but i have now and i love it porter whitchurch maker we'll have to m make out what he made John 24 gold, getting crowded by the little bullocks there. I know I'm famous. Yeah. I really need a crowd. You've all subscribed to me though, John.
They said they were bored shitless with that bullshit of the man in the hat. So they're going to see what Anglo-Celtic can dig up. I'm just catching up with John 24 Gold. We're just sussing out this small pasta. And he's got a pewter uh, fork or knife handle. There's a design on it too. I've just popped this uh, little corroded pen knife, a little bit of WD-40, and that'll soon be working. Mm -hmm. it's so, nice, yeah, John likes it, so I'd like I'd like to present it to you, John. You can take it back to Australia with you. Thanks, mate. Have you got the bog roll? Yep. Where is it? I might have to borrow some of that off you. Cheers, bud. John Hilton Smith's just up there somewhere. Um, there's been indicators on this field. We've not done this one before. So I'm letting John have a little taste of what it's like in England on an average day. Uh, I think this might be my first coin out of this field. Yeah, Georgia 5th. Georgia 5th halfpence there, look. Bit worn. 1919 or something. Anyway, first coin out the pasture. And I'm pretty much in the same area as that last coin. And uh, here we've got the imprint of another one. And the same coin, pretty much, I think. Oh no, this is a. Uh, this is George VI, this. 1937 ship halfpenny. Whereas the other one was George V halfpence. Okay. Another good little indicator here. A tombat button. Okay, guys. Uh, we're thinking this is a snake buckle. It's obviously in with some other metal and it's corroded a bit but it's only the second one I've ever dug so there you go I'll give it a little bit of a clean and see if we can get it out of there snake buckle go ahead okay so it's slowly coming out of its cocoon of rust there's all the rust down here look falling off uh, give you another update in a minute guys Snake buckle. Okay, guys, so there you see it. I broke the snake out of his rust. You can see his mouth's open there. And it's just a really cool snake. You can see his eyes on that bit there, look. Oh, he's he's uh, good, isn't he? I'll get that cleaned up a little bit more when I get it back to the house. And that's my first um, intact one. I did have one other complete one, but it was snapped in half. So I've done well to get that out of that rust. I'm happy with that. Done well to get the buckle out the rust, but I'll be doing well to get this Aussie out the, out the um, country. Easier to get that buckle out the rust than get this Aussie out the country, I reckon. Said he's just gonna stay here now. Till he's till he's found several hordes. He's staying here till I get him off that nasty habit, get him off the mine labs. This one was deep. Deep deep. It looks like it's been burnt too. I'll give it a wipe, it'll be a penny. Well, we've got a live reveal on a bottle, kids. John 24 Gold is helping me dig his first English bottle. Might have had English ones in Australia, but this is an English one in England. Uh, it looks, looks to have some age, guys. It's not ancient, but... But we'll, uh, we'll investigate. Yeah, yeah. Well worth it. So we've had a look, guys, and what we're saying is early... Uh, HP sauce bottle, 1940s, John. <laughs> yeah. 
That'll do. We rescued a bottle. Wartime bottle. Okay, guys, that's a griffin or something with a crown above its head. Just pop this little uh, button. Little flat button. And it's got its shank on, Bazza. And it's got a design. There you go. Well, there you go, Bazza. I'll think about giving it to John for you. Put it in your uh, bits and bobs. I don't think I've ever had one of these. This is the top off an old whistle. Like more of an instrument than a whistle whistle, I would say. Maybe what they used to call a tin whistle. Cool. Just pop this. It's got a hinge on the bottom. I don't know whether it would have been a clasp or something, but it's uh, 100 years old. Maybe late Victorian into the 1900, and it's an item that I dug. What did you just get, John? What did you just get? 1900 Vicky Penny. 900 Vicky Penny. Straight from the horse's mouth. In Australia. What did the geese say, John? They said it's coming in winter. We're flying south for the, for the warmer weather. You didn't say back to Australia? Oh, well, part of that. Looks like it's coming in winter, guys. We're flying south for the warmer weather.